Hi, and welcome to Fathoms Deep, a black sales podcast from Common Room Radio. I am Liz Stevens. And I'm Daphne Alu. Okay, we survived the calm. <laughs> we survived the calm. People don't say that very often. <laughs> But yes, and, yeah, um, we did. We, we just made it. We just barely made it. Still looking a little emaciated, still uh, a little worse for wear. I know, I know. Well, but yeah, we made it. Quite bad. And yeah, we do have a bit of a frying pan to fire kind of situation going yes, on in this episode. Yes, we do. It's the third one, from the storm to the calm to the island. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not, they're not catching a break right now. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> our poor pirates. I know life isn't easy for our pirates. Um, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I really like this episode, and um, yeah, now I just really I'm just curious where things from all the stuff we talked about last episode will like end up falling into place here. So right. I'm really I'm looking forward to us talking about it. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Sail! So we have three parts again. Mm-hmm. We have, uh, st- they're still on a ship. We still have Woods Rogers and Eleanor still on a ship. Uh huh. Yep. And then we have, I did our Ranger crew because we actually don't have Max this time. Yes, it is the Ranger crew though. And that made yeah. me really happy to see the Ranger crew together. You're right. No Max at all in this. No Max. Huh. No Max. Yeah. yeah. I know. I I don't know if I noticed that before. I noticed it when I'm writing down the parts and I was like, oh, right. what's going on with Max? Like, what is she doing? I mean, we'll find out soon. Yes, we'll find out soon. But yes, we do get to have our ranger crew together. And it's not much, but it's all really, really good stuff. And then we have our walrus crew on our new tropical island. Yes, we do. Breaking our hearts. Yep. Again and again. That's what they do. Yeah, that's what they do. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It's a lovely, lovely episode. It really is. It is. It's, Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, it's unexpectedly so I thought anyway yeah we get new yes, characters we do get new characters two badass amazing fully formed characters yep I know I like it aren't they incredible those two women they I are love them incredible the casting is incredible the writing is incredible did you realize that one of the writers is a woman oh I did notice that yes I wonder how many other episodes have had a female writer I don't know well, I loved these women. Yeah. I'll say that. Yep. Me too. So, mm-hmm. Yes. Well done. Yes. Thank yeah. you, Lisa. <laughs> that's, her, that's her name? Yes. <laughs> I've forgotten the last time I didn't write it down, but I was just like, Lisa, that's a woman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, thank you, Lisa. And thank you, John, who's the other writer. And thank you, John, of course. Mm-hmm. Thank, thank you, John, all the time. All um, the time. <laughs> all right. Let's start talking about our awesome characters. Okay. Where are we going to start? Prepare to board. Okay, so I debated, and I think we'll still start with Eleanor and Rogers like we did last time or the last two times. I feel like every episode, their relationship is just becoming more and more interesting. It sure is. Yeah, I liked them a lot this episode. It was very compelling the whole time for me. Yeah, and yeah, so I feel like what's really neat here is that I feel like Eleanor's finally getting the thing she always wanted. Like she had, she's, she has someone who, okay, sure. He has threatened her life a few times in the last, right, but you know, right. that's just, that's just every Wednesday for Eleanor. That's just normal. Um, uh-huh. But um, somebody who really appreciates her for the stuff she would have always wanted to be appreciated for. Yep. I was going to say you're skipping right to the meat oh, of it. Sorry, yeah, sorry. But absolutely- I couldn't, no, I couldn't No, it's okay. I'll myself. take it. No, that's all right. But yeah, absolutely. In fact, uh, by the end of this, and I forget exactly what it is that he says, um, but when he's basically saying... He says, despite what anyone may say of you each time. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. And you see also even Eleanor like feeling kind of shitty for the decisions that she's made in the past and doubting herself. And uh, yeah, you just see that moment of, of vulnerability from her. And then him saying, hey, the whatever other people think of you doesn't matter. This right. is where we are now. And I, I, I wrote down, yeah, <laughs> I wrote down, shit, he sees her. He does. Yeah. Right? So she's in trouble now, I would imagine. So <laughs> Yeah, well, it's interesting because I, I, I basically, I didn't write that down, but I thought the same thing. Like I, I kept yeah. thinking about as much as I adore Charles Vane and as much as... 
Charles Vane, I think, did true or does truly did. I don't know how to put it. Did or does totally love Eleanor. Loved her. Sure. But we talked about that, how he made her this like mythic creature. Right. She wasn't actually. Right. Like he imposed his own narrative on her. Whereas Woods Rogers is actually seeing her. Yes. And he is very strategic about him. He's very, you know, obviously like he's like, you are Uh useful to me. But I feel like the difference is from other times she's had people you like find her useful to them. He finds her useful in a way that feels like a collaboration. Yes. More than, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like he's very. Rather than her being some kind of authority that they don't really want and there's no budding of heads. Right. Is that and, what you're saying? Well, and then he doesn't want to like, he doesn't want to use her. I mean, he, and again, I think this goes back to what we said last episode was that there's no competition here. He is the yes. authority. Mm-hmm. And he's very straight up about it. Like, I'm okay, the authority. Yeah, that's what you're saying. You mm-hmm. are useful to me because I value the things that you are very capable at doing. Yeah. But there's none of this, like, there's no shifting sands here. There's no, like, ebb and flow oh, of uh-huh. it. You see what yeah. I'm saying? It's just like, I do. Uh, like we said last time, I think that the relief from being in charge. Yes. Coupled with someone who sees her and respects her. I mean, really respects her now. He really does. Yeah. I just feel like this is really doing the thing she never got. Like, he's not a father figure, mm-hmm. so that's great. We, right. We yep. like that. Because <laughs> <laughs> yes, she, she gets all crazy when people are father figures. Uh-huh. Um, and he's not, right, he's not trying to use her because of her power. He's trying to no. use her because of the things she respects about herself. Right. Yeah, he says you're smart and without having to have someone to tell you how to be. Right. And... You're not afraid to have people think that you're wrong when you know that you're right. Right. That's what he says. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. I think you hit it right on the head. That's what she values the most about herself. Exactly. To, so to have somebody else value that also right. is going to be really important for her, well, for her character. And I think it's also good for her that she's learning about, you know, his pirate self, like his pirate. Mm-hmm. He's not really a pirate, but, you know, like his kind of pirate spirit. Like when he talks about, I love when okay. she first walks in, you see all of these men walk out of his cabin and she's walking mm-hmm. past, you know, her in her in her corset and her girly dress. Right. She's walking past all these men and then they're all leaving his cabin. She walks in and shuts the door. And this is when he says all of the promising men, promising sons of prominent families. And I yes. wouldn't trade any 10 of them for you. Mm-hmm. And this is because he is he thinks outside of the hierarchy and outside yes. of the strictures of civilization. And this mm-hmm. is something we yeah, see. Yeah, that's a good point. And I see this as kind of his pirate self, like his, you know, the, his, the, oh, he's, okay. he's part, he's part of civilization. He's part of the hierarchy, but he doesn't respect that without thinking about it. And we see this over mm-hmm. and over again. Like we see every time he interacts with Chamberlain who like, you know, Chamberlain's the opposite, you know, he's just like, thinks totally inside of the box, which makes him a yes, really bad uh-huh. captain. <laughs> In these, when he's dealing with pirates and yeah and it's yeah. really really interesting because you know we see that later when they're dealing with the fire ship i want to talk about the fire ship from vane's perspective oh i want God. to talk about this yeah. fire ship from vane's perspective but first we should talk okay, about it from sure. their perspective is you know chamberlain's just like comes down he's like okay this is all working i'm you know they're gonna release they're gonna they're they have no choices they're gonna give us right. charles vane yeah. and everything's gonna work out and then when that ship starts going towards them it's Rogers who says, yes. you know, cut the cables, pull up anchor. And Chamberlain's like, what? You know? He, yeah. And things fine. This is fine. <laughs> and he says, you're overestimating them. Oh, is that what Chamberlain he, says? Chamberlain actually says overestimating. <laughs> That's great. I missed that little detail. Right? Very nice. And so Rog- uh-huh. Rogers is just like, he he's fast on his feet. He thinks like a pirate. He he's just like... Yeah. He's, and then with the cannons, they're firing at the rigging because yep. that's what they're trained to do. And I loved how he took command. And he's like, you know, he. I mean, I can almost feel like him just wanting to yell at everyone, like, just right. think about what you're doing. Don't exactly. just do what you're supposed to do. Do what's appropriate for the situation. Right. And it's just what he told uh, Eleanor that he respected about her. Exactly. Like, you don't have to have somebody telling you how to be smart. Right. So, yes. So this might be like a huge breath of fresh air for him. Like everyone else is just doing what they think they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And then, yeah, the thing about despite what what anyone may say of you, like this whole thing was about her. You know, she was so troubled. I mean, from the minute that he proposed that she be his advisor, she just seemed so distressed. And then he finally makes her say, she's like, everyone's going to tell you that I'm not trustworthy and that Mm -hmm. that anyone is a fool to get close to me. And then he basically says, he's like, look, clean slate. I'm just seeing who you are to me. Yeah. I really like Woods Rogers. I know. I don't know if we're supposed to yet, but I really like him. Luke Roberts is excellent in the role. I mean, I I haven't seen him. You told me before he was on Game of Thrones. Yeah, he had a small role on Game of Thrones, but it was pretty, pretty awesome. I'm hoping he's in the yeah. next season a little I don't, bit. I, don't, I haven't seen Game of Thrones, but he's wonderful. This is the first time I've seen him, and he's lovely. Yeah, he really is. And it's such a subtle performance because I just yes. feel like you really – it's so worthwhile to watch his face closely. Like, he just uh-huh. – even the most – It's all on his face. It really is. And just, like, the mm-hmm. most minute expressions he's doing yes. are really, mm-hmm. really important to understanding what the character – because he is. He's a very yep. – he's a very reserved character. Uh-huh. But he is, he's managing just through these tiny things that are going on his face Little to tics. express yeah. so much. Eyebrows. Yep. Lips pursing. Yep. Lots of good eyebrow work there, Luke. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, he's fantastic and he continues yeah. to be. And um, this is really great. And I, yeah, I was supposed to like him. Again, we're supposed to hate the idea of him. And I think that's exactly what they're doing beautifully Mm -hmm. is that we're supposed to hate the idea of him. We're supposed to be kind of mad at ourselves for liking him. Well, yep, that's where I am. Yep. So yeah, they they nailed that one. Yeah, because we know, (laughs) I mean, again, not everyone knows the history, but we know that this, we know what his purpose for coming there is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're supposed to even, I think, feel conflicted about that. And, you know, and Flint takes us down that road very explicitly at the end of the episode. So we'll get there too. Right. Uh So, I mean, I just think that the character and the performance are really making us have all of these emotions about it. And, and yeah, I feel like sometimes I like him so much that I feel like I'm betraying myself. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. (laughs) And that's exactly the kind of conflicted emotions that Black Sails likes to bring out in me. Yep, they sure do. They love it. I love it too, to be honest. I do too. I just, right. Mm-hmm. You're just so engaged all the time. Yeah. And this is like a new engagement. I feel like this is like, they mm-hmm. that this character brought us a new, a new type of conflicted emotions. And so just like mm-hmm. another layer of emotional engagement, even than yes. what we had before. So mm-hmm. it's awesome. I'm going to continue to like him. I mean, I know, I know how much I like him in season three. And I guess it's okay for me to say he's going to be in season four and he's going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited. I really am. Sorry, everyone who worried about his fate. Sorry, he is going to be in season four. <laughs> well, if you've seen the previews and the stills for season four. Then That's you know. true. That's true. He's there. Okay, I didn't give away anything. No. All right. I'm ready to move on to our Ranger crew. I was so excited to see the Ranger crew back together. I know. Isn't it nice? It's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's... A very interesting new dynamic, too, because now Jack has... Well, well, Jack is so interesting in this Mm -hmm. because he does still have the fort, but it is slipping out of his hands as we watch. And he knows it. He's being crushed by it. But he really has more of the respect of Charles Vane than he's ever had before. Yeah. Well, and at the very beginning, when they're knocking on the door Mm -hmm. and what did he call him? He called him... uh... Uh, Paul something or another. Paul, Paul something, yeah. <laughs> Paul something or another was like, we've known uh-huh. each other so long. Come on, Jack. And when he tells him to, op- I remember the first time when he says, open the door, I was like, what? What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. And then when he just like walks out there and just shoots that guy in the head. Oh my gosh. Right? I'm yep. just like, oh, that's it was awesome. I, I know, loved it. But it was just but... like, Jack, you you found your badass self just like yep. a few months too late. Like, that was amazing. <laughs> oh, no. You're so right, though. <laughs> Aw. Yep. Because this is the most badass we've seen Jack. And it, but it's it, true. It was and a still, very Malcolm Reynolds move. I like it. And still totally ingress. It was a very Malcolm Reynolds move. <laughs> Yeah, but he's still totally Jack when he does it. Like, that's the beautiful yes, thing. It's absolutely. like, he just, mm-hmm. he did that in a way that was totally the way Jack would do that. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that moment. You know, whatever. Sorry, sorry, Paul, something or another. 
<laughs> really, sorry, not really, sorry. Yeah, sorry, not sorry. Really enjoyed watching you get <laughs> shot in the head. Yep. <laughs> Oh, dear. I know. And then Featherstone comes up and says that the crew voted for them to send Bane away. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And Jack's like, yeah, this this is over. Like, Bane tries. Every- so sad. I know. Yeah. Bane tries. Yeah, to, like- well, Bane tries to talk him into going with him to see Blackbeard. Right. Because he knows that he'll be received. And I loved that, that Jack cannot go. Because, I, I mean, he's right that... He doesn't have the respect of Blackbeard, and he would just be looking to get rid of him at any point. Yeah. And this was kind of the moment where Jack's like, you know what? I'm not actually your dog. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And well, he says what? I won't be a ward of yours Um, either. I've come too far to go back, which is a great line. It is. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's just, uh, I mean, it's so interesting because Jack, I love Jack in season three so much. And it, but it, I was going to say, this is Toby Schmidt's finest work yeah. so far, I feel like, in this episode. He's just on point. Oh, my God. But yeah, yeah. it's just like, what a hard few episodes for him. It's like, he, yeah. he got what he thought. He was just like, he was just like, could see the thing that he's always been wanting oh, and just not quite get it. Yeah, just all he's just so heartbroken, but he also is mm-hmm. so determined to keep his self respect. I mean, it's just like, the, yeah. you know, he's just, yeah. Oh, Jack. <laughs> and that lo- those lovely parting words. Fuck you, Jack. I know. Well, and I, I just, love you too, Chaz. Oh, my God. No, yeah. but even before that, when he says he just says that whole thing, where he's like, I fucking never liked you and then i always i just always want to finish that sentence with because i love you (laughs) (laughs) but it was just so beautifully done like he is i think yeah i think even he's sometimes exasperated with himself for how much he loves Bane. you know it's just Mm -hmm. like he just this is one of the aspects of jack i love he just he wears his heart on his sleeve that man loves he does yeah he he loves strong that's a good point (laughs) he loves strong indeed yeah and and he just yeah it's just he's he's really he's quite torn up and i think i think bane is too in his own way like it's just it's Mm -hmm. interesting to see the two versions of it you know jack's got all this emotion happening in his face and Mm -hmm. bane's just doing his like stony face thing but he's but he's sad too like they're this is hard for them Mm -hmm. and it's just beautiful i mean i feel like you know we've seen many iterations of jack and charles yes um through through up until this point this season is where we really got to see them in a in a version of them that i believe had been a version of them you know like we see them in season one where they're in a lot of strife and having a hard Mm -hmm. time but i feel like this was then a continuation of when they did have a ship and they did have a crew and they were a team Mm -hmm. and and it's pretty pretty lovely it's just a really lovely relationship and it's interesting to see Anne now, too, because she was there. She was a little bit in the background, like she right. used to be. But she had none of that scowl nope. of before. Remember season right. one, that scowl all the time and that sneer? Right. Well, and she, she was had saying her softness opinion. and a smile. She was saying her opinions. Yep. Yeah. She was lovely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, she talked to Vane directly. I mean, think about it. In seasons one and two, she never really spoke directly to Charles Vane. Mm-hmm. And she was the one who's like, I don't understand all these horrible people here and you're the one that they can't forgive. Yeah. Like that was Anne saying that, like that was just really interesting. That's a good point. Yep. Like she was Mm. always kind of Jack's appendage and Jack had the relationship with Vane. That's true. And I feel like this was a moment that showed us that in this period of time, since they got the gold and since they had this coalition Mm -hmm. that she had had more of an active role. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think suddenly today is when she spoke to Vane. No, no. I think you're right though. Yeah. Um, so that's just really neat. I don't know. Right. Yeah. We get to see them like this right before they have to all separate. Uh, I know, which is a shame. But again, beautiful work. It, great storytelling. Uh, yeah, really great. And yeah, and I, I also love the Featherstone here. Like, I love when they go to, like, set up set up the explosion and Vane's like, I don't, I don't believe that you have enough to, like, really put a hole in that wall. And Featherstone's, yeah, what? Yeah, we do. Like, I just, that yeah. was like, I, I actually loved how understated his, like, he's just like, it also showed how much he and Jack are a team. I also love how understated it was when Vane said, well, he realized that they had the money put aside, some of the gold. It's oh. like, you hid some of the gold? Yeah. Uh, well, Anne hid it. <laughs> <He says. laughs> 
<laughs> Still has to be a proper pirate. It wouldn't be a yeah. proper pirate thing to do. So, uh, well, Anne, Anne took some. And he says, well, is it enough or something? <laughs> he makes that face. He How makes much? that face. I love that, that face. That face is fantastic. I it's know. so good. That little noise. No. <laughs> 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 so great and you're right it makes an excellent gif i did i tweeted that at you today yes and i was <laughs> to like make ah, you happy. <laughs> i wish i remembered the context for this and it was a delightful little surprise it yeah. is it is it, that that conversation between jack and bane i really mm-hmm. could just spend a whole podcast just talking about how much i love <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and yes and the fuck you jack at the end is just an adorable little it's it's a, just it's a lovely little, yeah it's just a little treat for all of us yeah <laughs> It sure is. And yet, totally works. <laughs> so let's talk about Vane's escape. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. Right? This was great. A great combat scene. I like stage combat anyway. Oh, do the you? So I don't yeah. really. It's so funny. Oh, I but like this stage one's combat. amazing. Yeah. It's so good. It's so good. That sand throw was amazing. Mm-hmm. And then he does this immediate like duck and turn thing. And he's just... Batman. Charles Vane is Batman. Yeah, no, so, he's incredible. Yeah, it was lovely. And then, and then, right, so you really think, you're like, oh, great, you know, Charles Vane, badass, he's going to get out of this. Right. And then all mm-hmm. those other guys show up. That's true. And but then, then here comes Teach. Thanks, Dad. I know. You know, everyone <laughs> needs a dad with three pistols attached to the front of his body. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I, I, I really, I really, again... I think I've made it clear that Teach Teach gives me a lot of joy. <laughs> That's right. You really like Teach, don't you? I, do. yeah. I love this when he comes and he's just like, shoot, shoot. I'm just, yep. and I just like, it's just like, his attitude is very different. He's kind of a cowboy. Yeah, a little bit. Like, cause yeah, he's just like, he's quite, you know, Vane's really like into it and doing all these moves and like really physical fighter. And Teach is just right. like, Teach is like, yeah, I'm just going to kill everyone. <laughs> He's just so nonchalant about it. It was like he the is. same uh-huh. as he's been about everything. He's just like mm-hmm. his his he's nonchalant. That's his true. badassery is so deep down in his soul uh-huh. that he mm-hmm. barely needs to actually like move around that much to show it and right. kill everyone. <laughs> that's hysterical. Yeah, that's a good point. I love it. I don't know why it just makes me so it just fills me with joy. So yeah, so then uh, they're on the ship and Teach shows Vane Eleanor, which is Vane deals with that very well. <laughs> he does. Yeah, it's an interesting little sequence there. And well, and it's nice too, because he doesn't try to pretend that it's not bothering him, you know, nope. and he's he's very upfront with Teach about what's going on. And I love that little um, exchange where he said, oh, you're putting Charles Vane, putting mm-hmm. his anger aside for, you know, the greater good. What happened? And he says, I learned a lesson. It's been very effective. He says, who taught you? She did. I know. And the way he says yeah. it breaks my heart. Yeah. Because he is. He's, he's, he, you're right. He's not hiding his emotion. He is Mm-mm. absolutely showing that this is very difficult for him, but yeah. that he is committed. And it did show the change. Like, it's great yeah. character work just to show that, you know, there are effects, these long-lasting character-changing effects from our actions and, and from actions made a- upon him as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is so beautiful as the flip side of that moment when when she closed that gate on him. Yes. That was, he managed also to do this very restrained, but very deep emotion in his face and in his, and in his voice. And that's exactly mm-hmm. what he did here. Uh, I wanted to bring in one bit of history. Okay. Charles Vane did actually break through a, bar- a, a British barricade of Nassau using a fire really? ship. Yep. Oh my God. That's awesome. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, and I had forgotten about this little detail, so oh that was another goodness. fun thing. Yeah, wow. But as soon as I just saw the fire, I, I remembered. But it's even so when it showed like dumping all of the logs, all the burning logs, on where they had the pitch so intense. set down. Oh my gosh, it was amazing, and the music was excellent. The yeah. whole sequence was gorgeous. I loved that they made the choice that you could still see the clouds behind him. Yeah. It wasn't just like this black sky. There mm-hmm. were these like ominous gray clouds. It was amazing. Yes. No, it's incredible, and it is. It's just. I don't. 
don't know. I think in general, this isn't the first time we've seen this, but and it's not going to be the last time. But I love seeing how pirates use the water as part of their warfare. Yeah. You know, That's every time, like mm-hmm. like we saw Flint and Silver uh, swimming to the Spanish man of war. Mm-hmm. And this also, like that to a lot of people, this is probably very obvious. But when I first started watching this show... Uh, I was just really flabbergasted by that. I just thought that was, it was so brilliant. And again, to me, seems like very much like pirate thinking outside of the box kind of way of doing warfare. And it's so brilliant. Like this is a perfect example of that, that they light this Mm -hmm. fire, they all jump in the water, they have boats waiting. Like it's, yes, it's, yeah, it's just really cool. And, and of course, pirates would be good at swimming and dealing with the water as well. (laughs) Uh That seems like that's probably a prerequisite. Um, and yeah, I just, I thought this was a really great example of that, of how they do this. Um, yeah. In addition to just being so beautiful, so beautifully choreographed, like when, mm-hmm. when you see the ship hit one of the British ships and you see teaches ships sailing by in the darkness, I just, every time I'm just so elated. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous right. scene. I'm just so full of emotion. I'm so happy that they get away. I'm so like. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's really exciting stuff. I yeah. Know. It was it's beautifully so, done. So good. All right. So our last bit of Ranger crew is uh, Jack and Anne in the cave. And I don't know if this is the oh, same yes. cave. Do we think this is the same I cave? I know. That's very interesting, isn't it? I wonder mm-hmm. that. Probably. Yeah, I don't know. That seems it's hard likely. To say. It seems likely. Yeah. Uh, so they're hanging out in the cave. And I think this is, you know, we've talked about this before. And we talked about this last episode. We talked about how, you know, the kind of intrinsic differences between Anne and Max. And here yes. we're seeing mm-hmm. how Anne and Jack are so different because she's just like, yeah. We got our money. Let's, you know, let's just go somewhere. Right. Let's just live we're life. We're better off than we were. Someone called the success. Right. I like that. Right. Fuck those people. Exactly. <laughs> Fuck those people. Because the only thing, I mean, this is really, I think this is the moment we've seen more than any other moment. I mean, he's talked about his name. He's talked, he said yeah. his name a lot. Jack Jack likes to say his own name. He does. Uh-huh. But this is, I feel like, more than any other moment we realize, like, the only thing ultimately that he wants. It really is. Yeah is for his name to be in history. Mm -hmm. He can't see the good in this and just cut his losses and run, even though he kind Mm -hmm. of sounded like he was planning on doing that to Bane, but he can't be satisfied with that. Yeah. He'll never be satisfied. Mm. I, I, you know, (laughs) you beat me by one second. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. That was for every, that was for everyone doing Hamill sales with us. Uh, huh. I also, I, I really relate to Anne a lot in this. I love her line there. It ain't good and it ain't fair, but it is what it is. Right. That's kind of like a life motto for me. It is what it is. <laughs> so. Absolutely. I mean, it kind so of I should really be like everyone's life motto, it, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, it's better than sulking there with Jack, I suppose. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I mean, maybe we'll see ultimately but like you know maybe that's part of why she's so good for him is that he needs yeah. someone who can be that person for him and mm-hmm. you know at least point out the upside of things right <laughs> yeah uh-huh <laughs> this goes back i think uh, to a theme that we've had throughout though is that people mm-hmm. who think in the short term and people who think in the long term yes. in the greater picture and it's interesting cuz i feel like generally the show has always sided with the big picture people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like we may respect the small picture people and like them, but like, I feel like always we're rooting for the small picture people to learn from the big picture people. You know what I mean? Like how Bane went in that direction. Yes, absolutely. He did. Mm -hmm. This is interesting because I feel like this is a moment where we're firmly, or not our loyalty, our frame of mind is firmly, on the side of the person who's who's thinking small picture and that small picture yeah. is actually the beneficial way to be thinking at the moment. Mm-hmm. 
So I just feel like that's really interesting. And I'm not sure we've had a point like that before in the show. That's interesting. I think you're right. Yeah, which is good. It's good to show the value of the different perspectives. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. And we've had people move towards each other in that way. But I feel sure. like, again, mm-hmm. the the big picture has always been the thing that we're that we're valuing more. Well, we'll see what happens with these two next episode. <laughs> but now we, again, have the bulk of our episode firmly yes. with our walrus crew. So let's start talking we about do. them and our new island, our new setting. Okay. Yeah, it is a new setting. I love that we start out with a billy bath. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it was just for me. <laughs> I did not think about that. I mean, granted, when I pictured the Billy Bath, he was in a, a little sudsier, perhaps. Yeah. Greater, a little sudsier, a little more of a state of undress. However, <laughs> there was some cleaning and rubbing happening. There so was. I'll take what I can get. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I managed somehow not to think of that. Like, yay. <laughs> I was so sure you were going to tease me right away. I know. I, I can't <laughs> believe I missed this opportunity. <laughs> yep. But I, you know, I was distracted by, by the flint and the silver, I think. Ah, uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, the thing I wanted to talk about was how we're introduced to this island, mm-hmm. especially after the doldrums, after starving and squeezing oh, of yeah. eels and and, and all of that. Thanks for that. Mm-hmm. Sorry. But You're okay. But I'm bringing it up because... Our introduction to the island is not the pirates arriving, but it's the island itself. And it's so lush. And we see yes. flora and fauna and life. And and I just thought it was really neat because we're, we're introduced to this island and it's just so hopeful. Yeah. So hopeful. Like, mm-hmm. and Teaming then, with life and water. Exactly. Yeah. And then we see our pirates there. We're like, yay, they found land. <laughs> and then we even have another great thing is that we see Flint and Silver like being nice to each other. Yeah. And it just mm-hmm. all seems so I love, hopeful. Yeah, Flint immediately says, we, we need yep. this. We need to think about that, which is great. Yep. We yep. need an answer. Right. Mm-hmm. They're totally consulting. The first thing yep. he does is bring Silver water and asks if his leg hurts. Yeah. Uh-huh. Which is great. And of course yeah. it does. Yeah. Right. He does. <laughs> yes. Yes, it hurts. Right. We've had a really, we don't know how long after the wind picked up in the last episode, right. but you know, they, they're alive. So it can't have been that long after they, after the wind picked up that they find this island. So they've managed to repair or find a new direction for their relationship quite quickly. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's kind of, you know, we get a few moments of that being downright lovely. Yeah, we sure do. Yep. You know, Before. moments, right? <laughs> moments. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh, and and it's really interesting. Like Silver's putting all of these pieces of this story together about the pardons mm-hmm. and brings up what Billy said, which about is great. Their, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we know Silver, smart guy. Mm-hmm. Not surprising. But then he says, if I was Whitehall, I would come in with a universal pardon. Yep, it's a smart idea. Why did no one think of it before? I know. Oh, wait. Why didn't anyone <laughs> think about that? You know. 10 years ago in England. Uh But what's interesting is that this is Silver inching his way a little bit into the, into the Thomas and James territory. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. It is a little bit. I wonder if that's why Flint or, or among the reasons why Flint comes clean like he does. Yeah. It just shocked me when he came clean. Right. Right. And he almost did. I mean, the only thing that interrupted him from doing it right there on the beach was that that they saw that his crew had been captured. Yeah. He started to. And right. What a day for Flint. I know. What a week. Or however long it's been. And you know, this just this show. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, yeah, like, I think he's he's had a rough 10 years. (laughs) He's had, yeah. Oh, man. He's had a. No wonder he's telling Miranda he's thinking about staying. Oh, yeah. So yeah, so it was really interesting, but it was really interesting Mm -hmm. because, you know, Silver says that stuff and that's when the first level of Flint opening up was he said, he's like, Silver's like, well, we better prepare the men that we might be embattled with England. And he's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, if there was a fight, I doubt it lasted very long. They've probably Mm -hmm. already given in. And that's when Flint says the amazing line that always gives me shivers. 
Silver's like, but our men resisted the pardons. And then he says, Flint says, for whatever reason, when you and I speak with one voice, we can compel them to any end. Mm, Interesting. I know. So this goes, we don't need to go, we don't need to rehash a lot of the stuff from last episode, but I do think that this does border on the territory we were talking about last time, that now Flint was a kind of a mythological creature and perhaps the two of them together as partners have an mm-hmm. even stronger power. So we'll definitely, s- yeah. I don't think that's going to surprise anybody. No, yeah. no, it's not. Um, but yeah, I love the way he says it. And then right, and and then Silver says, you know, how can you be sure that NASA has already given in? And that's when yeah. they're interrupted. Another bit of history: mm-hmm. this island, from what I have learned, is a pretty good depiction of of what actually was going on in the Caribbean. A lot of Africans were brought straight to the Caribbean when they were Mm -hmm. captured and enslaved. And many of them escaped and created their own communities and, and specifically used kind of guerrilla tactics to protect themselves, like very much like what we're seeing here. Wow, that's amazing. I know. It's really interesting. And that is a huge part of the of the history of the of the colonies in the Caribbean, mm-hmm. not just English colonies, also Spanish, yeah. also French. Wow. Yeah, it's neat. It's a it's really neat. I remember being really happy when they brought this aspect of of the history of the Caribbean at that time into mm-hmm. the show. It's 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 a cool direction they chose to go. Okay, so they're walking through the jungle again. Flint shows concern for Silver. He asks him if he's all right. Silver says no. And then we see some of the guerrilla tactics. It's a gr- I thought it was yeah. a great way to introduce it when the one crew member, when Silver falls down, the one crew member yep. tries to escape. And Flint immediately is just like, oh, no, this man is dead. Yeah, Yeah, he just knows he's dead. Mm -hmm. But he's not dead the way I expected the first time I watched it. uh -uh. Right? It's true. Yeah, I was ready for that guy to, you know, harpoon him or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And instead, we get that awesome, like, tiger pit, Swiss Family Robinson style. Very nice. Um, So, yes. So this will be significant is all I'm going to say. Well, I guess it already is significant in this episode because we hear about the traps later. But yeah, but it's just like it was what a great way to introduce this, like just that Mm -hmm. we understand immediately that. Yes. Escape. Not really an option. Not an option. Despite what, despite what Billy wants to believe. Oh, lovely Billy. Um, yes. Well, Billy, once Billy hears from Ben Gunn, we meet Ben Gunn Mm -hmm. soon. And once he hears from Ben Gunn, the torture that's going to happen, you really see that flicker of fear come back across his face. And he says, we have to get out of here. (gasps) Oh, I didn't make that connection right. This comes back to his whole, his experience of being tortured. Of course. He remembers. He can't do that again. Right. He can't do that again. And like we found out in season two, he was willing to do anything to protect his crew members from the same fate. I had Mm. not made that connection. Right. Of course. This really puts an edge on, I mean, I, I had thought of it just about Billy trying to save everyone, but yes, that puts an added edge to his specific. Yeah. That makes his, like his really, I mean, he gets a little frantic. Yes, yeah, it makes it very personal. Right, mm-hmm. exactly. That makes a lot of sense why he's not necessarily being so rational about yes. his wanting to make plans. Okay, that totally makes mm-hmm. sense. I just want to bring up before we talk about the Queen, again, another moment with Silver and Flint is that when they are walking yeah. towards the village, um, Silver actually has his hand on Flint's shoulder. Like, this is mm-hmm. really... I just, you know, they're really bringing home. I really like it. I know, right? I just, Mm -hmm. all these subtle, subtle moments of of them showing us how these two are a team. Yeah, absolutely. And when the queen calls out, who's your captain? And Flint immediately steps forward. And then who's your quartermaster? And there's a pause. Yeah. But Flint lets Silver come forward. He doesn't... I don't know what I would say exactly is happening there. It's interesting. But I think that Flint took a certain amount of pride in the accountability that comes with being a captain. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to allow that same kind of pride and accountability for Silver. Maybe. Maybe. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, we also see, you know, there are different approaches to it also have to do with this, you know, this continuing theme that we've had this whole season of people who are used to being leaders and people who are new to it. I mean, Silver, mm-hmm. Flint, you know, he is the captain. That is what he is. Right. Yeah. Um, and Silver still like, doesn't, he's just, he's not a hundred percent there. He's not a hundred percent like, right. 
in that place of I am a leader of men. We already said in the beginning, but that queen, damn. So amazing and so gorgeous. Yeah. yeah and, just, and so regal. I mean, she's Regal just, is exactly what she is. Absolutely regal. Yeah. It is yes. not for nothing that she is called queen. <laughs> mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. Yeah. But she does ask Flint's name. And when he says it, I think she recognizes that name. Oh, yeah. Well, and of course, by the end, we realize that there's a good reason for her to recognize yes, that name. Yes, uh-huh. absolutely. But she does recognize that name. But it is like, we we have a slow introduction to the fact that she knows what she's dealing with. Like, yes. that she knows, she knows captain, she knows quartermaster, she knows, she knows the ranks. She yep. knows that a quartermaster speaks for his men. Like, she totally uh-huh. gets it. She knows she who she's it. dealing yep. with. Yeah. Oh, she was amazing. She is a good character. Like, Compare that entrance to Eleanor's entrance. <laughs> yes. Well, this is how you badass, ladies. Yes. This right here. Right. But on some level, that makes sense because, again, we kept talking about it. Eleanor was in this role, but kind of flailing half of the time. Yeah. It's she true. didn't mm-hmm. know who she was. So she wasn't doing a good job of it. This yeah. woman knows she, she is, she is the black beard of badass women. Like, she knows who she is. Uh Uh-huh. She's, like, good at, I don't know what to call it, like, uh, queen theater. But she's Uh not overdoing it because her authority completely rests inside of herself and she knows it. And power that's that the just is power that like just that. is for real, not for real, not, not for, just right. in not Charles just... Vane's myth of Eleanor. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So then uh, Silver explains to her that they did not come there on purpose. And uh, and he says that he swears to it. I remember he uses some word like that. And then she says, if you were me, would you wager the lives of all of those in your care on the word of a pirate? Mm hmm. Who's going to say yes to that? Yeah, right. <laughs> and again, back to our theme of leadership. Yep. She is a leader. I, and I love that when Flint brought that back to Silver mm-hmm. when he says, look, you're new at this. Yep. But I know what she is thinking. Right. Like I know what how it feels to have all of these people who are there. They depend on you to take well, take care of them isn't quite right, but right. to protect them, yes. And to make the hard and choices for to make these calls, them. make these decisions. Yes, absolutely. Right. She is Clint's parallel, his match. Mm-hmm. Wow. Although she seems much less conflicted. So maybe she's not really his match. Maybe she is more like a Blackbeard. Like she seems, she does not seem particularly conflicted about what she's. No, she's not no. conflicted. Right. Yeah, Maddie, no. right. Mm-mm. We'll get into Maddie soon. Maddie is. I love Maddie too. Gosh, I love her. The first time we see her walking through camp, it's no it's no wonder that Silver immediately picked her out and was like, who is this? Right. Well, because we know Silver knows people. He does. He knows people. He can see that, yeah, that she is someone special, that she's commanding respect. Yep. And yeah, Silver is doing his, his thing. He's just thinking fast, trying to find yeah. solutions, looking for looking for a route to could take. And yeah, and it's neat because... I feel like this is the first time we really get to see him doing this, like reading of people and figuring out the politics of a situation, but he's now doing it for the crew, Mm -hmm. not just for himself. Like up until now, he's, we've, you know, we've seen him do this many times and expertly and, you know, it's always interesting, but his motivation is different now. Again, back, you know, back, he does want to save himself, obviously, but he is doing it for the collective, not as a way to like single himself out for benefit right yeah okay so then at night uh we get to see the villagers together and i just thought that was a lovely little moment of just seeing this you know this beautiful life that they have built there Mm -hmm. yeah you're right i thought i think that was important i think it was important for us to see that and not just see um because we we need to see what she's protecting. We need to see yes. that mm-hmm. this is And she says it. She does say it explicitly right. later when she's talking to Maddie. Absolutely. You know, families and children being born. And she says it. But it is nice to see it. You're right. It is. And it's just a snippet. But it was, perf- it was right. the perfect amount of just seeing people being together, community, happy. Yeah. You know, so you understand that they aren't just people who are being brutal to our pirates. They're people that we mm-hmm. now identify with as well. Yeah. So so we're invested. We're invested in this in this discussion that Maddie and her mother are having because we also now want them to be safe. 
Mm -hmm. Like they, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they are, they're totally sympathetic for us as well. So Billy's trying his, uh, he's telling the story about, about guns, uh, about guns crew and how they were doing forced labor and how they tried to escape and yeah. everyone died except for one. And he's like, so this, you know, so we've got an opening. <laughs> right. <laughs> this oh, is gosh. what I'm saying. Yeah. Like Billy's just not, he's not. No. Yeah. But you're right. He's irrational. He's, he's got right. this irrational fear. And yeah. No, no. And I'm glad that you filled that in for me because I didn't quite ever somehow pick up on that one thing, oh, which is really important to understand really why important. Billy's doing what he's doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I love, I love Silver's line. He's like, I, I think because Flint, you know, he doesn't exactly say, yes, we're going to do that. But he kind of lets right. Billy think that maybe this is where he's, and Silver's like, uh, I think we're missing the point of that story. Right. Which was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I know. I just feel like Silver. Yeah, this is this is Silver's kind of in the place in this episode that mm -hmm. Billy was in the last episode. Like Billy was the clear headed one dealing with crazy Flint and crazy Silver. Mm -hmm. And now Silver's the one who's just like, what the fuck, guys? Because <laughs> like, <laughs> like yeah. Billy, Billy's trying to escape into this trap laden forest. Yes. And yeah, and. And Flint's just checked out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I feel like this is this this episode is Silver's turn to be the guy who's like, why isn't anyone being rational with me? <laughs> yep, it's true. And, but then, and also the alignment has changed because when Silver says that, Flint says to him, this this like process of planning this escape is helping mm -hmm. Billy because it's keeping him focused yes. on that instead of on the possibility that we don't have another option. And so again, mm -hmm. this is like in the last episode, Flint and Billy were talking about Silver kind of as the person they need to manage. Yes. And now Flint's talking to Silver about Billy as the person oh, who they need, they need to manage as a team. Yeah. Yep. That's Again, I don't think that I th I felt like last time Flint was doing it deliberately to divide and conquer. I mm -hmm. I don't I mean again, it's like like Silver said he when he said where are you? Like Flint's just not which was a great line, where are you? Uh Right. Yeah. And Flint's not actively doing anything in this episode. No. Well, he's ready to give up now. Yep. <sighs> which is hard to watch. It is hard to watch. It's beautiful though because god, he must be so tired. Right. And remember we just saw him break down in the cabin just sobbing. Yeah. He's so tired. He's so tired. Right. I love I love this scene in the boat with Miranda. I think it's beautiful. <sighs> I know. I know it's really beautiful. Okay, tell me your thoughts yeah. about this. I love the lighting. I like how they've kind of graded out just mm -hmm. a little bit. Um Toby Stevens is fucking genius. He's so good. I know. It's oh God, he's so good. I and, know. Uh, God, when he says, I miss you. Oh, I know. His face, right? It just kills me. And kind of over his shoulder. Uh, mm -hmm. uh. Yep. Yes. <laughs> what yes. if I were to stay? Is that what he says? Yeah. He's just he says, so right. tired. He's, yeah. He is so tired. He doesn't see a way out of it. And he's just lost the will to keep fighting for it, to keep scrapping. Right. Right. Yeah. The thing that's interesting, like that part, I understood the the line that's very interesting is actually Miranda's, that she says, I see you're curious again, and that you want to follow me through a door. Mm -hmm. And I just felt like that was really interesting wording, because it's way more active. Yeah, I mean, you're, it's you're true. You're curious again is way more active than anything we're actually getting from Flint. That's very interesting. Isn't it? Yes. I, I still uh -huh. I still have not managed to like figure out what I feel about that line, but yeah. it's... It is, it's so striking. There's just, it has to mean something, hmm. right? Well, I suppose there is something to, like, even the fact that he's not just thinking of laying over and dying in the way that someone would go to sleep. Right. But rather, we see this internal monologue where he's thinking of rejoining Miranda. Even in that speech he has with Silver later about how this was all his idea to begin right. with. Him, right. Him and Miranda and her husband. And so maybe he feels like it's possible that he'll get back to that in some way. You know, maybe that's what she means by curiosity, that right. there's a curiosity about something like an afterlife, about something that right. can be different from the awful reality he's found himself in. And that's where the going through a door. Yeah, yeah. that was the thing I thought of. And I, I thought of um, 
you know, this idea that basically that she molded him in large part into the man that he is on yeah. many levels, like molded James McGraw. And then, you know, like they said in the last episode, basically birthed Flint. Yes. Mm-hmm. So like, maybe that's what it's referring to is like this sense of that without her, he lacks form. And so, yes. and so mm. to follow her would be the way to find a new form for himself. I like that a lot. That's really wise. That's good. I mean, I'm aware that the there's another part of this conversation. I don't remember what's in it. This conversation continues in the next episode. Oh, I don't remember that. Okay, so we'll have to see. Yeah, and I don't remember what they say, but I feel mm-hmm. like maybe the answer to what this line means will come to us in the next episode. Okay. Okay, so then we have Maddie uh, summon Silver. Mm-hmm. And this, I have questions about this scene, too. It's interesting. I just feel like each one of these conversations in this portion of the of the episode are very dense and have a lot of meaning going on in them. Mm-hmm. First of all, her room full of books. Is gorgeous. I want that room <laughs> full of books. And also your white dress, please, Maddie. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Her, and, yes. you know, to be soon to be queen of an island would probably be all right, too. Yeah. <laughs> If we're making wishes, let's go all the way. <laughs> but I just thought thought it was interesting. I mean, I, it's very striking on this island of things made from the island of bamboo and thatch and all yeah. of this to suddenly see this really big library. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's very interesting. I mean, this is, in my eyes, a very clear alignment of her to the world of not necessarily civilization, but to Flint's world, like to... Yes, to Flint's world. That's a right? good point. To the yeah, world McGraw's of books, world. Uh-huh. right. Exactly. To the world of books, to the world of learning. She's living in this island in isolation, but yes. the books she's reading are books of mm. of Europe. I mean, I, yes. we don't know how many languages she speaks, but like at least of England. And that's a lot of books. It was a lot. And so this means that, I mean, we don't, you know, we don't have to hide who she's, who they're getting all their stuff from, because we find out Mm -hmm. in this episode, this means that Scott's been collecting not just guns and gear that they can't make for themselves, but books, which is a very deliberate choice he's been making to educate his daughter. You're right. Yeah. To educate his daughter and by extension, his people. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and we know that Scott is someone who became literate as an enslaved person under the Guthrie's. Mm -hmm. So it makes a lot of sense. And this ties into what her mother says later on when she says, you know, I can understand how this would be enticing, especially to you. Mm -hmm. Because imagine she's a girl who's been living in isolation, who doesn't, we understand that she, her mom says, like, you haven't really seen this brutal world. Like, so she's been living in isolation. How long have they been there then? We'll find out later. We're not, we're, yeah, we don't know the answer to that in this episode. I was just afraid that I'd forgotten. Okay. Yeah, we will we will find out more about the circumstance of how they got there and the story yeah. behind it, but we don't know that yet. Okay, but we enough. know we know that her mother says that she did not see this brutality, but that her mother did. So that much we know. Oh, okay. All right, fair enough. But again, so she's a girl who's been living in isolation with all of these books from the world that the pirates yeah. come from. Mhm. Interesting. Right? And Silver mm-hmm. sees that. He doesn't tell Flint about that, but, there, you know, we know Silver. There's no way. Right. Yeah. I put this together. Mm-hmm. Right. If I see this when I see her living space, then he does too. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so that's really interesting. So, and I, I really like her question. So she asks why they refuse the pardons. And uh, Silver gives her lots of reasons. All the reasons we've talked about for the last, you know, two seasons plus a few episodes about why mm-hmm. why men became pirates and how the pirate world was better than than what England had to offer them or the horrible things that England did to them and then she just like she's like yeah whatever my people right. were slaves <laughs> like, uh-huh. like she's yeah. just like she's totally like yeah true. yeah there's just no way that anything you all experienced would make you hate England as much as my people hate England <laughs> <laughs> and she's probably right yeah yep. Yes, she is. Mm -hmm. And she says, and still, if they were offered the opportunity to be free, because that's Mm -hmm. what we know they wouldn't have free under the law, I don't think everyone would say no to that. Yeah. Well, it's so interesting what Silver says about that. You know, for whatever reason, your mother wants people here to fear England. 
and Flint wants England to fear us. Right. Well, and these yeah. are two different styles of leadership or two different yeah. approaches to how, how to benefit one's people. And so I just, I really like that that got laid and out for us. They both come at a cost, very different costs, but they both right. come at a cost. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, leadership always comes with costs. Yes. Yeah. This is, you know, this is what we know about leaders is that they make choices and those choices aren't easy and those choices have consequences. Yeah. Um, so the line that has always fascinated me, it might not be more complex than what it is at face value, mm -hmm. but I wanted to ask your opinion of it. Okay. So when she says that she doesn't think her people would so roundly reject uh, the pardons, mm -hmm. she says, tell me why. And he says, I know that my crew's lives are held in the balance by my answer, and I don't want to say the wrong thing. And then yeah. she says, perhaps you are mistaken as to which of us needs protection. That line actually confused me just a little right? bit. Right? Yeah. I'm not sure what she means there. So when I first started watching the show, the first watch or two or five or however many times I've seen this episode, uh -huh. uh, when I first saw it before we started doing the podcast... I actually always felt like she was saying that she needs protection. That's almost what it seemed like. Yeah. Right? Uh huh. But her attitude doesn't fit with that because she's still doing her regal thing. Like right. She shows no it's actual so vulnerability in her, in her demeanor when uh -huh. she says that. So it could, it could be read as a threat. Like she's saying, you right. know, you're the one who actually needs protection. Which makes here. more sense, really, in the situation, but not in the conversation. Well, and but even in the situation, like this fits in with his idea yes. that that there actually is Yes. With his idea, definitely. Right. So I think it's kind of cool that it's open ended. I was just yeah. curious if you had more of an opinion than me. Like I still I kind of go back and forth. I don't think I do. No. I like the idea of the ambiguity though. That's right. That's she good. never chooses yeah. to look vulnerable to him. Once she goes from right. mother, she does. Yes. To him she doesn't. Mm -hmm. And even when he you know, when he kind of breaks down and beg basically begs her to spare yes. his men, she still mm. she does not break her kind of regal demeanor. Right. Yeah. I'm gonna bring that up a few episodes from now. This, okay. this conversation. There's All stuff right. in here that I will bring up in the future. So yeah, okay. So we're both, I think we both are coming down on it being kind of gloriously ambiguous. Yes. Uh-huh. I think so. Yeah. And you're right. We don't know yet. You know, we don't know yet how all this is going to play out. And, and right. definitely her conversation with her mother expands this idea that we don't really know what's going on. Silver was mm -hmm. right that there's more going on here than what right. they want the pirates to see. Mm -hmm. uh, when Silver gets back to Flint and Flint talking about the pardons. God. Right? Again, this is extraordinary work. Toby Stevens is so good. He's so good. Breaking my heart. I don't know if I have any more lies left in me. <sighs> God. I know. I know. He says to Silver, he's like, Billy is consoling yeah. himself by thinking he can fight his way out of it. You're, mm -hmm. well, no, that's when he says lying. He's saying we each have our own sort of lie. Billy's yes, is that he can lies. fight his way out of it. Yours is that you can talk your way out of it. I got nothing left. Right? Uh, and this is where he tells the story of the pardons and about how he mm -hmm. was the one who built them. And it's so interesting because Silver does not look as shocked or aghast or surprised oh, as one might think, which is very interesting. Right. Because, well, we know... I mean, he saw Miranda. He understood who Miranda was. Mm -hmm. And he knew that... Yeah, I guess after the trip to Charlestown, it's a little bit... Right. He knew that Flint had been friends with Peter Ash. So I think right. he already had been introduced to the idea that... So Flint... really, this was the missing puzzle piece for him, actually. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Mm. I don't think it occurred to him that this was the puzzle piece because... Yeah. Because on the beach, he was like, how would you know... You know, what would make you assume that right. that everyone had taken the pardons? Right. Um, so, yeah, so Flint also, I mean, it's just so interesting. These He's using language that really calls back even to season one. He talks about, mm -hmm. he says, you know, this is who I was and I've been inching away from it, but maybe I need to stop doing that. Like he talks about that civilization maybe is the victory. Yeah. He talks about forgiving. Mm, All yeah. these things that season one and even season two Flint was not ready to do. No. And mm. yet, all these things that back then we kind of wanted him to do 
And when he talks about it now, it doesn't feel like a victory. It feels it like doesn't. utter defeat. Like yeah. We, we're with silver. We want, we're like, no, no, yeah. <laughs> it's not inevitable. But uh-huh. isn't that interesting where they've taken us emotionally that we wanted Flint once upon a time to like let go of his anger and forgive? Yeah, not that long ago. Really not that long yeah. ago. And yet when he's ready to do it, we don't want him to. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's lovely. Isn't that so interesting? I mean, it's just, mm-hmm. I feel like I could spend years unpicking how this show brings me through an emotional process. And when I say this, I want to say specifically that I'm not manipulated. Like there is a lot right. of, a lot of television and movies manipulate you into a place of emotion and you, and you fight against it because you're being manipulated. You're being forced there. Right. Yes. Uh huh. And when and with black sails, I feel like my emotions are taken in directions I wouldn't have expected, mm-hmm. and I just find that you know sad, of course, because this is black sails. But yeah, you know, but but at the same time, really satisfying because I feel like I've not been manipulated into a direction. I feel like I've been shown new doors, just like Rick. yeah. Interesting. Uh Uh-huh. This gets down to really one of the things that spoke to me so much in the beginning of this show. And one of the things that continues to amaze me Mm -hmm. that I've not yet found a number of rewatches where I don't have new emotional experiences. That's amazing. I'm always surprised and delighted by that, by yeah. how much that's true. And this is one of those moments where I was just, yes. the first time I noticed how much he, there, he's using his own language, but from the opposite side, mm. I, was, I just had to like stop for a second and say, wait, how did I get here? I don't even know how I got here, but I'm so here. I'm so, yeah. like, I'm so with Silver trying to convince him to come back. To come yeah, back to and fight. fight. Yeah. And that's so interesting, too, because even our, you know, antagonist right now is Woods Rogers, and we kind of like him. Right. So it's like the first time we like our antagonist, and we like, I mean, not England, but by extension. Right. We like Woods. No, we still, still, still hate England. We, we still hate we England, hate but I just mean like the representation, right. the representation of England at this time right. is Woods Rogers, and we like him. Right. So it seems like the idea of Flint teaming up with Woods Rogers shouldn't bother us. And yet. But it does. It does. Yeah. That's really, that's really wonderful. I know. Damn you, show. I mean. Right. I love you, show. But damn you, I show. I love you, show. <laughs> yeah. And then we find out that our island king is, Scott. is Mr. Scott. God, I love that. Isn't it amazing? It's so good. I love it. I love Scott anyway. Yes, yeah. I've always loved Scott. And, and I just felt like, I don't know if this was their intention from the beginning. And I, I wonder about that. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I mean, I do care. I would love to know. I yes. don't know. But what I'm and it doesn't make that much of a difference. It, yeah, it doesn't mm-hmm. because it does feel like one of those moments where like you find something out and every, it feels like you could go look back at everything you learned about him. Uh huh. And, it and it'd all, be different. It all yeah, and it all fits now. Like it all fits into yeah. place in a way that you didn't sure. realize before. It's such a neat reveal. It's you know especially because they've been talking yeah. about him all episode. I know. And then they shoot him. Uh-huh. Come on, show. What are you guys doing to us? <laughs> what they you always too, do. Lisa. <laughs> We're on to you. <laughs> They're doing what they do to us. It's mm-hmm. never easy. <laughs> no. <laughs> Can you imagine if we had an episode for like things were just pleasant? No. <laughs> I don't think I would want that episode. No, not of this don't. show. You don't want that like, episode. Like there are certain there are certain shows where I like that episode, but not this one. No, not this one. Yeah. yeah, I'm here for the tragedy. I am. I'm here for the tragedy mm-hmm. because it is. It's so beautifully done. Yeah. Ready the guns! Full compliment. All right, Liz, what's your thesis statement this week? Okay, well, I'm glad that I happened to hear it and it clicked into my brain because a lot of times it, I feel like I would have to go back and rewatch the mm-hmm. episode. So, But occasionally I'll hear it and I'll be like, wait, yes, this is what everyone is doing. This is what everyone is scrambling to do right now. So even even when it's a bit duplicitous, as it is in this case, mm-hmm. when Scott says, if this is what Nassau is to be, 
I see no value in resisting what is clearly inevitable. Oh, that's it. We got a lot of talk about inevitability, right. about whether or not there's value in resisting the inevitable. Absolutely. Jack is dealing with the inevitable. Vane is dealing with the inevitable. I think that I think this is the one. Oh, and how appropriate for our king to have given us the thesis statement. Yeah, how I'm totally on board. How appropriate for our king to give us the thesis statement. Good call. And not believe it in the least when he says it. Right. What is clearly inevitable. Right. Obviously, he doesn't think that. No, but... right. And Hornigold yeah. calls him out on that. He says, you know, that's not a great endorsement. Yeah, well. No, mm -hmm. but that's perfect. Well, good. I'm glad you like it. All yes. right. Hopefully, our other listeners will also latch onto that and we'll have some pirate names. Yeah. Okay, so it's two. <laughs> Sue, again. What do we do with Sue? She's already captain. Sue, she's already captain. She already has a ship. Damn, Sue, you're rocking it. Uh, <laughs> should we give her a prize, a ship to take? Yes, let's give her a ship. Okay. We'll give her a second ship. She can write her memoir, Ships I Took. Ships I Took, <laughs> yep. <laughs> she can take Jeff Powers as the manatee. There we go. <laughs> oh, Jeff. Sorry, Jeff. Sorry, Jeff. You have to come up with a new name now because... Yep. Captain, uh... Yeah, Silver Sue O'Shandy, right, Captain O'Shandy. Right, yep. Silver Sue O'Shandy just took your manatee from you. <laughs> and our other pirate winner is Emily Emerly. Oh, Stormy Morley. Yep. Okay, so Stormy Morley is now a bosun. All right, get your bosun okay. whistle, lady. Gotcha. You're all good. All right, Liz, what was your favorite part of the episode? Uh, my favorite part is the Tobies. I love my Tobies in this episode. <laughs> Toby Schmitz, Toby Stevens, killing it. Oh, no. Well, uh, my favorite thing is kind of overlaps with that. But, okay. Uh, my favorite thing is is the goodbye between, yeah. between Jack and Chaz. Jack and Chaz. Oh, That goodbye just kills me. Blood brothers. Yep. Off they go. Yep. Yeah. So that is definitely my great. favorite thing. We have a few announcements. First of all, listeners, you all rock. Uh, Hamel Sales is amazing. You should be so proud of yourselves. Hamel Sales is amazing. Yeah. If you haven't checked that out yet, it is worth getting a Twitter account just to follow hashtag Hamel Sales. Yeah, really do. It is such a mm -hmm. hoot. And so many people have posted and such amazing combinations of yeah. of lyrics from Hamilton and stuff from Black Sails. And I guess even if you don't know Hamilton, I mean, we're going to assume you know Black Sails if you've been listening to us, but even if you don't know Hamilton, it's going to be fun. Or you could just yes. go listen mm -hmm. to Hamilton. Which we highly recommend, of right, course. Right, which we totally mm -hmm. recommend, which would be doubly fun. And um, at the point that we recorded, some of the actors have also posted some, so that's an added treat. Yes, it sure is. Uh-huh. It's been great. I have been having so much fun. So thank you, yeah. everyone who's participated, because it really has made my week. Mm -hmm. And then uh, our other announcement about it, because people have been so dedicated to it, and some people have really posted so many amazing combinations for Hamill sales, uh, mm -hmm. we've decided to extend our our Blu-ray giveaway to people who have been involved in Hamill sales as well. So all of you get to be... Yeah. In, it's a pretty creative endeavor. It is an extremely creative endeavor. And, and some of you are taking a lot of time and effort yes. and making their own gifts and stills. And yeah, so I think that definitely counts. Yes, absolutely. And and some of them have really blown me away. Just, just uh, really. Blow us all away. Yeah, indeed. you, have, you yep. have blown us all away. Um, <laughs> Push the blood in the shit spray. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm just wrapped for you. Never again. Uh, I will not rap for you. Sorry. I will just continue to tweet Hamill sales. Fair enough. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. So uh, when this episode drops, the drawing will actually be uh, the day after. We're going to do the drawing on the 8th. So we will get in touch Excellent. with whoever wins. Uh, uh -huh. And then we will send you the Blu-rays of season three. And we've watched them and they are awesome. They're, they are awesome they're, and beautiful. Yes. And you get some mm -hmm. really great historical extras and super fun. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's it. All right. Well, thanks again for joining us. And until next week, from Common Room Radio, I'm Liz Stevens. And I'm Daphne Olive. Fathoms Deep is a Common Room Radio production. For more information and access to other programs, please visit us at commonroomradio.com. 
To show your support, pledges of as little as a dollar a month can be made to patreon.com slash common room radio. Join the conversation by using the hashtag Fathoms Deep and follow us on Twitter at Black Salescast. We ask that you keep your tweets respectful and positive and please avoid spoilers. If you have more to say, we want to hear it in all its spoiler glory. Email us at podcast at commonroomradio.com with Fathoms Deep in the subject line. Thanks for listening. Every time they are on screen, cannot look away. Every every little move you make is magic. I can't believe I just did that. I'm going to regret it forever. It's okay. <laughs> oh, does that mean I'm, that means I'm leaving it in, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, or you can cut it. It yeah. doesn't really matter. Either way. Oh, God.